Hi, I'm Pete Gerlach. I'm a professional psychotherapist, family therapist, and trauma recovery therapist. <clears throat> I've been doing that for 31 years. During that time, I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of persons and couples struggling to improve their lives and their relationships. One of the things I've heard often enough is a disgruntled person says about their mate or a friend or a relative, a child, a parent, a co-worker, uh, he or she is a pathological liar. I want to offer some perspective on that unfortunate label. Um, when people use that label, it shows me they're really not aware of what causes compulsive dishonesty. <clears throat> Let me try and briefly explain. Um, we all lie, would you agree? You do, I do, at times, uh, for what we think are the best of reasons. Uh, we can withhold or distort the truth in order to avoid hurting someone, which is meant as a kindness. Uh, we lie to avoid our own inner critic, who causes us guilt and shame. Uh, we lie to avoid conflict with people, minor to major, um, occasional to chronic. And we lie in order to gain a social advantage in certain situations, to get one up on competitors or other people. Can you think of other reasons that you have distorted or omitted the truth? Do these fit you? We've been taught since early childhood that lying is bad. Liars are bad people. Liars should be punished and scorned and criticized. Is that what you were taught? I think most of us were, both in school and often by the church. People who lie all the time, chronically, and are caught at it, or people who suspect that people, other people lie all the time, can be called pathological, pathological liars. That's a scornful, critical, demeaning term. Pathological, uh, for me, is associated with badness, sickness, um, I don't know. What does it mean to you when someone says pathological, what comes into your mind? If anyone has ever accused you of being a pathological liar, or if you think you are yourself, or if you have judged someone else as a pathological liar, an option is to substitute the more accurate term compulsive for pathological. It's less pejorative and more accurate. Compulsive means someone who cannot help themselves and cannot stop lying even though they may want to and they know it's wrong. They can't stop. In that sense, it's very similar to an addiction. What causes addictions and other compulsions, including compulsive dishonesty, is, in my professional experience of 31 years of studying human behavior and motivation, what causes that is surviving significant childhood abuse, neglect, uh, or other trauma as a very young child, and forming some significant psychological wounds. This can be, there's a shorthand code for these wounds, which can be called being ruled by a false self. People who lie compulsively and chronically and deny it, either to themselves or to you, in my experience, merit compassion, not scorn, not judgment. Doesn't mean you have to put up with their behavior. It does mean you can think of them with compassion as having bear a born major psychological wounds that they did not ask for and that they inherited from wounded ignorant parents who inherited that from their own ancestors psychological wounds passed down the generations 
What is this false self? After many years, I propose that normal personalities like yours are composed of subcells. This is an old idea. It goes back to the time of Socrates or before. Your, sub, your personality and mine and your favorite, favorite liar, uh, their personalities are composed of individual uh, semi-independent parts or subcells like the members of a sports team. Each has a special function. Each sees the world in its own way. Subcells exist to help us survive. They're not good, they're not bad. They're wired into us to help us stay alive and avoid pain. Um, People have a unique mix of subcells. There, it's a unique as your thumbprint, but there are some commonalities to most people. I've been working with people's subcells for 19 years. What I've observed is people who lie occasionally or chronically, whether they deny it or not, are often controlled by some subcells like these. One is a scared child who has been taught way, way long ago, if you tell the truth, you're going to get really badly hurt. That inner child is usually living in the past. There may be several such inner children. There's another inner child which brings you the fear of guilt. I told a lie, oh, I broke, I broke the rule. That triggers another subself which can be called the shamed child. When you lie, if you've been taught, it's bad to lie, you're bad. That brings up the terrible, painful feeling, I am a bad person. You can also have an inner critic that can scour you, scorn you for lying, you weak, sniveling, so-and-so. Um, you can have a magician subself who makes it miraculously, it's okay to lie. In this instance, it's a good thing because blah, blah, blah. The magician distorts reality and can justify lying in the most creative, amazing ways. So these inner children and inner critic and sometimes a worrier, what will happen if I lie? And your magician, all of these together can be called a false self. They disable your true self who knows how to act in a moral, upright way and find a way to tell the truth. Another reason that many people tell small to large lies is, in my experience, they have never learned the seven powerful, effective communication skills that I, I outlined in lesson two of my nonprofit website. If you, don't, if you can't name these seven skills, you're probably not using them. I would bet almost certainly any chronic liars in your life could not name or use these skills. If they could, they would know how to assert and listen and problem solve from their true self, not a false self, and that would mean they would not have to lie, except perhaps to spare someone pain. So, what I'm inviting you to do here in this video, anytime you hear or use or think the term uh, pathological liar, rethink that. I encourage you to say compulsive liar, which is less scornful and more accepting. And what I mean by that is, this is a person who bears psychological wounds that they're unaware of, they didn't ask for, and they didn't know, and they don't know what to do about it. And they also were never taught vital communication skills that would help them know how to tell the truth in most situations. If you are such a person, I strongly encourage you study lesson one in my nonprofit educational website at sfhelp.org. Learn how to assess if you are ruled by a well-meaning false self and see the related videos at YouTube. 
If you are, you can reduce the wounds over time and free your amazing true self to lead your life. I also encourage you to study the Lesson 2 communication skills to improve, to improve your ability to assert your opinions and your limits and do effective problem solving with other people. There's a lot you can do. Reflect for a moment. Why did you begin watching this video? What did you need? Did you get some or most of what you needed? What are you thinking now? Be aware. Thanks for watching.